You're tuned in to Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. tuning in to the Greater Refuge Temple Church, the church in the heart of the city with the people of the city in its heart, the church chosen by God for the blessings of the multitude. Where the anointed Bishop Charles Wright Sr. is pastor and Bishop William Wilkins Jr. is our assistant pastor. Join us where service is already in progress. right where you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Certainly we welcome you on this morning to the Greater Refuge Temple. We thank you for tuning in to the Greater Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. The church chosen by Jesus Christ for the blessings of multitudes, where the anointed Bishop Charles Wright Sr. is our pastor. And we praise and thank God for every one of you, our father's children, who have joined us today. We thank God for bringing us thus far and certainly after a difficult week with our elections and so much going on, the coronavirus in our country, amen, it's time to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So receive at this time our praise and worship team. Come on, let's have church.
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God. Don't you feel his presence? Don't you feel his presence right where you are? Don't you feel the presence of the Lord? Amen. The presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. We thank God for his presence today. We thank God for his presence today. We thank God that you feel his presence right where you are today. Glory be to God. And as the Spirit of the Lord is moving right now, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to touch you even now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you, God, because you have been so good to us. All week long, God, you kept us. God, things may not have been the way we wanted it to be, Lord, but you have been faithful. God, and we thank you today for that. Lord, we ask you now, Lord God, to touch all of those who are viewing us via our live streaming. Lord, we thank you, God, for all of the members of this great church and all of the partners and friends of the Greater Refuge Temple. Lord, we ask you now to meet them where they are. God, we ask you to touch them and strengthen them by your power and by your grace. God, we ask that your anointing, Lord God, will flow free. Lord God, even through this means of communication, God, Lord, somebody needs a touch from you. God, somebody's body needs to be healed. Lord, we ask you to go into that emergency room right now. Lord, we ask you to go into ICU right now. God, we ask you to go into that hospital room. Lord God, and heal and deliver by the power and by your grace. Oh God, we ask that you now, Father, would even touch, Lord God, those who are struggling, Lord God, mentally and physically, Lord. Lord, we ask that you, Lord God, would rebuke the hand of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we ask that you now, Lord God, touch our brothers and sisters under the sound of my voice. God, somebody needs to hear a word from you now. Oh God, we ask that you now would minister to our hearts, minister to our minds, Lord. Lord God, touch our finances, Lord. Lord God, someone is struggling financially, Lord. Let them know, Lord God, that you, Lord God, can answer prayer and that you can uh, work a miracle on their behalf. Send them a miracle, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, we ask that you do these things for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. And God bless you. We once again thank each and every one of you, all the members and all of the partners of this great church. You are sustaining us even through this pandemic. Your faithful giving, your faithful tithing uh, has not gone, gone unnoticed. We praise and thank God for you, uh, to each and every one of you, for your faithful giving to the Greater Refuge Temple. And we invite you at this time to join us in giving to the work of the Lord. Uh, we ask that you now perhaps go to the Givelify app. You can go to the Givelify app uh, and you'll see a picture of our pastor and a picture of our church. You'll know you're in the right place. Uh, you can give right now your tithe or an offering to be a blessing to the work in the kingdom of God. Perhaps you're not comfortable or you're not tech savvy. Uh, you can also give by just simply writing a check right now, getting your checkbook and writing a check uh, to the Greater Refuge Temple. Uh, and uh, you can simply mail it to the Greater Refuge Temple 2081. Adam Clayton Powell, Junior Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. That address again, Greater Refuge Temple, 2081. Adam Clayton Powell, Junior Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. And I know that God will send a miracle your way because you are supporting the work of the Lord. We also want to invite you uh, to pray with us now as we give our gifts. Father, we thank you now for this, uh, your offerings, Lord, that the saints are bringing to you. Lord, we ask that you now bless these gifts. We ask that you bless the gift and the giver. Perhaps there's some under the sound of my voice who hearts desire is to give, but they don't have the means to do so. Lord, bless them so the next time we come to this portion of worship, they will be able to share in giving in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, come on, say it. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. Come on, declare and decree it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you and God bless you. We also invite each and every one of you to join us this week. This week on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we will be celebrating and commemorating the life and the legacy of our former pastor, Apostle W.L. Bonner. Apostle Bonner meant so much to many of us. It is meant to you. So we want you to join us each evening, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 p.m. right here. You can join us as we uh, air throwback messages of our pastor uh, and uh, the Greater Refuge Chapel. I know you will be blessed this week if you join us at 7 o'clock right here, same place in Jesus' name. God bless you. At this time, we'll have a final selection coming to us from the voice of the Temple Praise and Worship Team. And the next voice you will hear after that will be that of our pastor, Bishop Charles Wright Sr. with our morning message, our praise and worship team, and our pastor.
Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we bless God and we give him thanks for another Sunday, another Lord's Day. We are here to praise and to bless his name. As our praise team sang, Sister Lydia leading it. On the battlefield. Are you on the battlefield? Fighting for the right. Fighting for the Lord. Fighting to make it in. We praise God for his blessings and we, at this time, ask that you would bow your heads in prayer with us. Oh, precious God, our Lord Jesus Christ and our Savior, we come before your Lord with thanksgiving. We bless your name and we praise you for all that you've done for us. Another week, Lord, you've kept us. You've kept us from harm and danger, seen and unseen, through the stresses of life and the threats, oh God, hallelujah, bless your name, Mekasha, hallelujah, we praise you and ask your blessings upon us if we stand, oh God, in thy presence and before your children, Lord, to speak a word in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would send your anointing, send your word. Rebuke the hand of the enemy and every contrary force. Everything that works against thy will, I rebuke it. In the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. And all of God's people say amen. 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 I want to call your attention to the book of Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very familiar passage of a scripture, one that we have heard of since we were little kids, way back in Sunday school and even before that, Daniel chapter 5. And we'll read the first nine verses of Daniel chapter 5. And the word of God reads on this for us, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and the silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink Therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of his kingdom of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. I want to use for a subject This morning, this Lord's Day, the handwriting is on the wall. The handwriting is on the wall. 
This is an old story, but a true story uh, that manifests so clearly the sovereignty of the Almighty God. And that is one thing that the book of Daniel will also emphasize, and that is God's sovereignty. God is the supreme ruler of the world, the entire world. Wherever a person might be, whatever ethnic group, or whatever national group, whatever power they might have, God is still sovereign. And that is something that we need to be reminded about from time to time. And God has a way of demonstrating his sovereignty in conditions and situations where people least expect it. He is there. He created all things by the word of his power. He spoke and it was done and commanded and it stood fast. And he has those same powers today. With all of the love and mercy he has, he's still the God of power. All God has to do is speak. And everything moves at his command. The time and the historical context of our message this morning takes us back to the 5th century. And that fateful night in 539 B.C., October the 12th, that Belshazzar, grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, Dear king of Babylon at this time heard something and he learned a lesson that he should have known already. At this time, the Medes and the Persians were outside of the city of Babylon. The Babylonian Empire was one of the greatest empires of antiquity. And the city of Babylon was a beautiful, magnificent city there with the hanging gardens they had there, one of the seven wonders of the world, built by the engineering and architectural genius of Nebuchadnezzar. This was the Neo-Babylonian Empire, a time when Nebuchadnezzar had demonstrated his power and grace, and God had allowed him to rise to power, but he also forgot that God had done it. And so God had to teach him a lesson. And God demonstrated to him his power and might. And when he had finished with Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, hallelujah, lifted his eyes up and praised God, God of heaven and earth, for all of his goodness and grace. And hallelujah, said he's a God of gods. Hallelujah, Lord of lords. He has wisdom that no one else has. And uh, after this time, when we consider the city of Babylon, it was the last remaining of that great Babylonian empire that had been brought into being by the power of Nebuchadnezzar somewhat earlier. But uh, it was a though magnificent city and a great city, it was a strong city. It was believed that the city of Babylon was impregnable. Uh, something that could not be penetrated. It was there, built astride the, the Euphrates River. It, the, the city of Babylon itself was like a 14-mile square. Uh, the Euphrates River running down the middle of, the, of Babylon, it's the city of Babylon, with houses three and four stories high on each side of the river. And on each end of the city, Crossing the Euphrates River, they had two big, hallelujah, bridges that people could go from the western to the eastern side of the city of Babylon. It had, hallelujah, about all a man or a woman could ask for in it. And Nebuchadnezzar felt good about his genius in building it until he got in trouble with God. Whatever we do in life, we must never forget the fact that God has blessed us to be able to do it. Any good done, God blessed us to do it. And we owe God the praise. We owe God the honor. Hallelujah. city of Babylon had walls that were about seven feet thick surrounding the entire city of Babylon. And it was so wide and, and tall that about 110 hallelujah, feet high until you could have a chariot with four horses abreast Turn around on that great wall. So did they feel the same way about the city way back there, hallelujah, 
in the time of Joshua, city of Jericho. It was a walled city. And hyperbolically speaking, walls that reached up into heaven, but God brought them down. So here we have another story about Babylon, the great city, great walls. And not only did they have these thick and tall walls to the city of Babylon, uh, there was about a 12-foot uh, stream that flowed inside of the wall, and between another wall on the other side was that not quite as thick. It was thought to be a city that no one could reach. So the story tells us, Herodotus, the Greek historian, gives us a description of Babylon from the time that he was there. It was a great city. And it had a great king who was a military genius also. But God allowed things to go on until the time came that God had to deal with it. And inside of this strong and big and tall and beautiful city, you have at this time Belshazzar son of Nebuchadnezzar. He was ruling there in Babylon. And, but the time had come that the Medes were looking forward to taking over this beautiful and strong city of Babylon, the Medes and the Persians. And that really was something that was prophesied a long time. Even Daniel himself, oh, about 60 or so years earlier, had prophesied about it in the prophecy, hallelujah, that was a part of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw this great image, hallelujah, Nebuchadnezzar did in his dream, and Daniel, blessed by God, he interpreted the dream for him, and it talked about another king, and a kingdom that would be inferior to that of Nebuchadnezzar that would come. Well, the time had come, and not only that, you have the prophet Isaiah talking about Medes, the Medes, how they would come and they would destroy the city of Babylon. But you know, people don't listen when God talks. Uh, but God had spoken, and it was going to come to pass over 200 years earlier. Isaiah had prophesied about the destruction of Babylon. And I'll jump ahead and say that the prophecy is in the book of Revelation also about another Babylon that's going to come. It's going to be destroyed by God also. So at this time, uh, the Medes and the Persians were outside of the city of Babylon. They were at the northern and the southern end of Babylon, where the Euphrates rivers flowed through the city of Babylon. And they had planned ingeniously that they were going to, hallelujah, take the city. But it was such a strong and a big city, so Cyrus conceived of the idea that he would drain the Euphrates River and divert, or rather divert the water into a lake someplace else about a hundred miles away and uh, but at the same time now you have uh, the king Belshazzar knowing that they were on the outside but with pride and arrogance because of the construction of the city he thought he wouldn't be have to worry about him so he threw a party at, that night and uh, invited all of his big shot friends to come by and have fun with him so they came by hallelujah with their finery on dressed hallelujah to the teeth, came there and they drank, they danced, the music playing loud late into the night. He knew the enemy was outside, but he didn't feel he had to worry about the enemy. Let them stand as long as they want because not only was the city strong, but they had provisions inside of the city in case the enemy tried to lay siege to the city. They would last for a couple of years or so. It's nothing like someone who is arrogant who won't listen. Nothing like someone who will not listen. Hallelujah. Their time will come. Everybody has a time for things to change. This world belongs to our God, not to any man. No matter what his position might be, God is still in charge. Uh, so Belshazzar threw the party in spite of the fact that the enemy was on the outside of the gates and they danced and they drank and played loud music, like I said. You, you've had some of your neighbors at times to have parties that you wish that they would stop. Uh, and the cops won't come, so you, hallelujah, just pray that they would get tired and stop. Hallelujah. Uh, so it was in the case of Belshazzar. They drank and lived a righteous life in this party, laid into the night. And the Bible tells us, hallelujah, while they parted there, 
You know how it is with people when they drink a while, they start feeling their liquor or feeling their wine or whatever they're dealing with. The impious thought came to him. The arrogance of Belshazzar came before him. And he decided that we're having fun, but I want to have more fun. And he asked them to bring forth the vessels of gold and silver and brass that they brought from the temple in Jerusalem when they brought Judah captive. Hallelujah, they were partying, that was one thing. But then he thought of this impious act. Let's drink wine out of the vessels of the house of God at Jerusalem, of the God of all earth. Hallelujah. So they brought it according to his command. They brought the vessels of gold unto him, and they poured their wine into these vessels, and they started to drink. Hallelujah. You know, you can do a lot of things, but there's a point beyond which you go that God's going to put a stop to it. Hallelujah. God's got everything under control. He knows what's going on. So the Lord, hallelujah, God of heaven and earth, when they, hallelujah, desecrated the vessels that belonged to the temple, God stepped in. God has a way of stepping in, hallelujah, that we don't sometimes expect. So in the, hallelujah, darkness of the night, when they were there in this large banquet hall, partying, hallelujah, and started partying with holy things, God stepped in. And you know one thing, our bodies are temples of the Holy Ghost. You can't do what you want with your body. Yes, God owns us. We are the Lord's property. No, you're not, it says the apostle in the third chapter, I believe, of the book of 1 Corinthians, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and God dwells in you. And as the apostle Peter said, you are bought with a price. Bought with a price, not of silver and gold. Hallelujah. We belong to Jesus. Oh, to every child of God who might have allowed this pandemic to get to them and they've forgotten whose they were, hallelujah, started living, hallelujah, in a way that they shouldn't. You can't do with that body what you want to do with it. It belongs to God Almighty. We are the Lord's property, hallelujah. Ah, uh, if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, you belong to Jesus Christ our Lord. So as God, in this example, through, hallelujah, Belshazzar, stepped in, hallelujah, I uh, reached his arm down through the darkness of night, hallelujah, into that banquet hall, and God started writing on the wall, hallelujah, and he wrote on the wall, hallelujah, many, many tikel you for sin, words that astonished Belshazzar and all of his guests. So when God stepped in, you know, a hand uh, writing on the wall, not attached to, to an arm or a body, and writing in a language that you don't understand, that will get your attention. God knows how to get your attention. Hallelujah. And so it was with Belshazzar the king. He stopped all of a sudden. Hallelujah. Parting. And everybody else. Just like when they stopped that record as they used to have records. Whatever they're playing right now. When the music stopped, Peter's, people stop. Look around. So he looked around. Not only did he look around. But the fear that came to him. Because of the way that God stepped in, hallelujah, to stop the desecration of his holy vessels. So, hallelujah, Belshazzar became terrified because of God's intervention, hallelujah. And it said his knees started knocking together. And his joints of his hip came loose. And he became pale in the face because God stepped in. God started writing, hallelujah, uh, just like God told, hallelujah, Habakkuk. I spoke on last week, write the vision and make it plain. God wants people to get the message. Time is winding up. It won't be very long. Hallelujah. We need to draw closer to God. Time is winding up. Uh, this pandemic is a sign that God's time is winding up. One of the things, hallelujah, God has sent to show that he's the boss. Hallelujah. He is sovereign. Hallelujah. We might think that we're the boss, but we are not the boss. Hallelujah. Our God, this is my father's world. My father's world. Your father's world. Whether you acknowledge it or not, it belongs to God Almighty. So Belshazzar became afraid and became discombobulated. Hallelujah. Didn't know what to say. Didn't know what to do. Standing there shaking. Couldn't stand up. And he couldn't sit down because his knees were knocking together. Oh, God knows how to get your attention. And God's talking to someone right now. God is saying, hallelujah, you've allowed circumstances in this life to make you so afraid and or you become loose and too comfortable, hallelujah. 
haven't been in church about seven months, and you're not where you used to be, hallelujah. I'm not picking on you, hallelujah, but don't let this COVID-19 pandemic cause you to forget who you are, hallelujah. You belong to Jesus. You are a child of God. And not only that, the blessings and the joy and the happiness that you're missing because you have not allowed God to bless you the way he wants to bless you. Even in the midst of what's going on now, God is still good. I thank God for salvation. Thank God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes, danger is around us, but I thank God. He has been good to us. Hallelujah. How many know what I'm talking about? Why don't you tell God, thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. You've been good, Lord. Hallelujah. You have blessed me, and I'm better than blessed. Hallelujah. Tell him thank you again. Hallelujah. So it was, hallelujah. Oh, Belshazzar had forgotten, hallelujah, that it, these were the Lord's vessels. And the God of heaven and earth, the God of the Jews, hallelujah, was not just like some of the gods that they had themselves, those pagan gods. And his name was Belshazzar. And that stood for, hallelujah, Bel will stand up in you, or Bel will protect you. But Bel can't protect against the God of heaven and earth, hallelujah. There's only one true and living God. That's our God, Yahweh, hallelujah, of Israel. Jesus Christ of the New Testament time, hallelujah. That's the one who is God. There's only one God, only one Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who's above all, he's through all, and is in us all. I thank God for the knowledge of the fact that there is only one God. Thank God that he has kept us with that understanding with the mind that he's the only true and the living God. Hallelujah. God spoke, hallelujah, in the 46th chapter of the book of Isaiah when he said, Bell down, bow down, Nebo, stupid their idols, were the beasts and upon the cattle, your carriages were heavy, hallelujah, carrying these dumb gods, these idols on a carriage and the animals are stooping under them because of the weight of these gods. But they were not real gods, hallelujah. Uh, and God mocked the gods of the Babylonians. And God said, there's a man who will frame and shape it. And then they will cover it with gold or so forth. Uh, but these are no gods. In the 47th chapter of the book of Isaiah, this is a couple hundred years before the Babylonian time. It says in the first verse, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, hallelujah, O daughter of the Chaldeans. But thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. God's pronouncing judgment through Isaiah on the hallelujah, the Babylonians long before the city, hallelujah, came to an end. Ah, uh, at this feast that Belshazzar had thrown, when the handwriting was upon the wall, uh, he did what he normally would do, as his father would do also, Nebuchadnezzar, called in the wise men, called in the Chaldeans, called in the soothsayers, called in all of the pronosticators, hallelujah, to have them to tell me what's going on. They came in just like before, but they didn't know what's going on, hallelujah. God has a way of speaking. You know, some people don't like the fact that we speak with tongues, but I ain't talking to you in the first place. I'm talking to God. <laughs> he knows what I'm saying. Inspired by the Holy Ghost. You're wondering why we're talking, but we're having a good time talking to the Lord in a language you can't understand. But at this time, God had a specific purpose in mind. God wanted Belshazzar to get the message. You've gone too far, Bel Belshazzar. You parted and you've worshipped your own gods, but when you start messing with my holy things, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to prove a point right now. So when God reached down through the night, his long arm through the sleeve of darkness and wrote upon the wall, hallelujah, and they couldn't interpret it, hallelujah. Then, hallelujah, the queen's mother, uh, Belshazzar's mother, Heard about what was going on in verse 10 of chapter 5. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There's a man in thy kingdom, hallelujah, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, that is during the days of Nebuchadnezzar, your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father, the king I say, thy father made 
master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and uh, hallelujah, the soothsayers. Hallelujah, your father called in Daniel, and Daniel was able to, hallelujah, tell him the interpretation of the dream that he had forgotten, and also tell him what the dream was. Hallelujah, uh, God had blessed him as such. So he called in at this time into the banquet hall. He called, hallelujah, Daniel in. And Daniel came in by God's instruction into the banquet hall. And God, hallelujah, spoke to, hallelujah, Daniel. When Daniel came in, Daniel was a humble man. Daniel had been used by Nebuchadnezzar to help him in the kingdom for a long time. But at this time, Daniel was an old man. Daniel was around 90 years old. Daniel came in. He was tired of the foolishness, tired of the mess, uh, tired, hallelujah, of the sin and the debauchery that was all around him. And Daniel spoke, hallelujah, to the king. O king, live forever. And the king said, I've heard about you, Daniel. Hallelujah. And he said, I heard that you had the spirit of understanding dreams and visions and so forth. And he asked him if he could tell him what was the handwriting on the wall. And he told Daniel, look, Daniel, I will bless you. I will give you, hallelujah, your gold chain around your neck. Uh, and I'll put a scarlet color roll on you. And I'll make you the third ruler in the kingdom of Babylon. Daniel, hallelujah, said to him, you keep your gifts. I don't need it. Hallelujah. You don't need the devil's mess. Sometimes he tries to entice us and get us to do what he wants us to do by offering gifts and presents or whatever favors he might be offering. You don't need the devil's mess. Daniel said, look, let your gifts be to yourself. Verse 17. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, hallelujah. He gave Belshazzar a lesson in history. Uh, a sermon and a lesson in history. The old man Daniel stood up as straight as he could at his age and said, Oh, Belshazzar, your father was a mighty king. The Lord blessed him during his lifetime. Uh, but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, verse 20 of chapter 5 of the book of Daniel, he was deposed from his kingly throne and it took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men in his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Yes, God rules in the heavens above and beneath among the sons of man. No man can stay God's hand or ask God what doing, what's going on, what are you doing, and why are you doing it? God has his way. Uh, Daniel said, yes, your father, Nebuchadnezzar, experienced this. He knew all of this. But in spite of that, he, he high-headed God. He didn't give God the reverence that he should have. And God called, smote him with a holiday of bocanthropy, they call it. A uh, condition where a man imagines himself to be an animal. And so Nebuchadnezzar lived like an animal for seven long years. Until he lifted up his eyes to heaven and praised the God of heaven and earth for what God had done in blessing him to give him back his, his sanity? Yes, God is a good God. In spite of what's going on, God told him, until your sins are broken off, until you stop sinning, you're going to be like this. God's talking to someone today. Yes, God's talking to you. God doesn't want you to be lost. Uh, hallelujah. God's asking you to walk before me. Uh, talk like a child of God. Act like a child of God. But you got to have the Spirit of God to act like, talk like, and walk like a child of God. You can't leave it on your own. Hallelujah. We've had people who walk like Nebuchadnezzar. We had people who walk like Belshazzar. We've had even a man who acted like he was Belshazzar. Like he was, hallelujah, like he was Nebuchadnezzar. But he was brought low. The handwriting is on the wall. You can't high hat God and expect God to let you go. Someone higher than you, someone big, bigger than you, hallelujah. Someone stronger than you, I say it, hallelujah. And God said the handwriting is on the wall. And as Daniel stood before Belshazzar, and he said, look, this is what it says. Many, many, he kill you for sin. Numbered, numbered, weighed in the balances and found wanting. You come up short. God weighs us in the, his own balances, not our scales. Not our means of measuring things, but God has a way of measuring. You might think you're all right because you go to church on Sunday, but it takes more than going to church. 
God wants someone who is saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. It's not enough to go to church. You got to have the spirit of the living God on the inside. Uh, as my Bible will tell me in the book of Romans 8 and 9, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And time is winding up. And COVID-19 is just one of the many signs that lead to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, people high hat God today. And you think they're getting by with it. Hallelujah. But God knows what's going on. God knows what's going on. And there comes a time. Hallelujah. When God's going to stop you. Might not send a handwriting on the wall. But God's talking to you all the time. Sometimes talking to you. Through your dead mother's prayers, hallelujah. You remember when she prayed? Uh, you remember the time she took you to church? God's talking to you now. Bringing remembrances to your mind. Bringing them to your heart. Listen, God's talking to you. The handwriting is on the wall. Time is winding up. Hallelujah. Yes, the Babylonian kingdom was going to come to an end. Uh, though Belshazzar thought it wouldn't happen. While he was partying, God was working. And when God showed him this and Daniel told him, Oh, you're found wanting. You come up short in God's scales and God's measurement. Hallelujah. And that very same night, that very same night, that night in 539 B.C., the Medes came into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Though the city was said to be impregnable and you couldn't tear the walls down. Oh, yes, but the Medes and the Syrian on the outside, as I said, they drained the water from the Euphrates River that flowed through and, and, and sent it off about 100 miles away from the place there. And the soldiers walked through, hallelujah, under the gates of the city of Babylon. Oh, yes, it came down shortly afterwards, hallelujah, when Cyrus and the Medes came in that city and took the city. And there were people in the city also. They said that, that they helped in uh, the, the, the people of Medes, of Media. Uh, when it came to the invasion by Cyrus and his people, because they didn't like what Belshazzar was doing. You know, a lot of people today uh, look at their leaders. They don't like what they're doing. They just can't feel they can't say anything about it. But the time will come. The handwriting is on the wall. Your jig is up. It's going to be in a short time. God's going to bless and do what he said through Habakkuk. When he said that the glory of the Lord, hallelujah, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will be covering the earth, like the waters cover the sea, one day God's day will come. Hallelujah. That is a vision. It's not going to change. Though it tires, wait for it. It shall not, hallelujah, cease. It shall not fail to come. God's, hallelujah, glory will fill this world today. Hallelujah. No matter what's going on and where it's going on, God's glory will fill the earth one day very soon. I'm reminded of a scripture, hallelujah, in the book of Revelation chapter 19. When we have, hallelujah, the coming of the Lord back to the earth, and we have prior to his coming back to the earth, the Lord's coming to end, hallelujah, the battle of Armageddon. And when he comes back, the heavens themselves, hallelujah, sounded forth with a great voice, the voice of much people in heaven, saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. One day we're going to sing that hallelujah chorus like we never sung it before. Yeah, all of heaven, all the people in heaven will sing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Oh, He reigns, He reigns with power and glory. He reigns, He will reign. The handwriting's on the wall to all of the words people. Babylon will come down. This Babylonian system that we're living in, this world, Hallelujah, is a type of Babylon. Babylon has always been a sign and a symbol of wickedness and of belt and rebellion against God Almighty. One day in the very near future, oh, God will come back. As John said, I saw heaven opened and I saw a white horse. He that sat upon him, hallelujah, had on his head uh, many crowns. And he said, King of King and Lord of Lord. On his thigh he had written King of King and Lord of Lord. And all of the armies of heaven followed him when he came back again. Hallelujah to the earth. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, uh, when he comes back again. There will be no tip to, for a thousand years. Yes, God will rule in this world. Our Lord Jesus Christ will come back again. And I rejoice. I praise God. I know that the handwriting is on the wall. Look for it. See it right before you. Let God bless you. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. 
Ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for humility. Ask God for grace. He will bless you. He doesn't want you to die and go to hell. I know some folks said, you shouldn't be talking like that, Bishop, right? Talking about hell. Well, hell hasn't frozen over, hallelujah. Hell is a place, hallelujah, that, that was made for the devil and his angels and anybody who listens to the devil. But in this time that we're living now, the Lord is calling upon you to be saved. Oh, repent of your sins. Be baptized in his name. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let God bless you. I thank God. Not only will you have the assurance of going to heaven and enjoying, hallelujah, the blessings of God and singing the hallelujah chorus like nobody else can sing it. And it'll be so beautiful to be beyond what Handel wrote. Handel wrote a beautiful s song in that hallelujah chorus, hallelujah. But I thank God when, when they put Brother Wright... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what voice I'll be singing in. <laughs> I'll be singing in. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord God omnipotent reigns. He reigns. He'll rule. The knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. The handwriting is on the wall, church. Handwriting is on the wall. In the book of Revelation, he said, I think chapter 18, John said, I saw a mighty angel come down from heaven, place one foot on the land and one foot on the sea, and, and swore by him that lived forever, there will be no more time. No further delay, hallelujah. The handwriting's on the wall. No further delay. Now is the time to accept the Lord. Now is the day of salvation. Get right with God and do it now. Get right with God and do it now. Not only will you guarantee your place in heaven, and your place in the choir loft singing the hallelujah chorus. But the joy that you'll have until that time. It's joy in serving Jesus. Joy that flows within my heart. Every moment, every hour. Hallelujah. I, hallelujah draw upon his power. There's a wonderful thing in serving God. There's a blessing in serving God. There's a happiness in serving God. Sometimes the world will tell you, you don't know what life is all about. Well, they don't know what living is. Thank God for the life in the spirit. New life in the spirit. Hallelujah. I thank God. I know what I'm talking about. And what God has done for me, God will do for you. It's no secret what God will do. What he's done for others, God will do for you. The handwriting is on the, all, on the, on the wall. He wrote it for Belshazzar 2,600 years ago. And it's still speaking today. The handwriting is on the wall. It's time to get saved. God bless you. To all who have been with us today in worship, thank God for his blessings. But remember, there's another side to God that we don't talk about a lot. He's the God of justice and a God of judgment also. Because he's just, he has to judge. Sin cannot go unpunished forever. Remember, hallelujah, judgment deferred is mercy extended. It's only the grace and mercy of God that he hasn't uh, judged us. None of us deserve to be where we are. So don't take God for granted. He has a way of speaking to us at unexpected times. He spoke to Belshazzar at a party. And I remember when the Lord spoke to me on a, uh, what was it, uh, uh, that day, Labor Day weekend. And I got me uh, some drinking stuff, alcohol, and I was going to go to Coney Island and have a good time. But the Lord worked on me. I poured it down the sink. And that was about 61 years ago. I haven't picked up any since that time. Oh, uh, you don't need to go to AAA. All you need is Jesus Christ. He will cleanse you. He will sanctify you. He will bless you. The handwriting's on the wall. God's calling you. If you want to be saved, you want to be blessed. Give us a call here at Refuge Temple. Give us a call, 212-866-1700. We'll pray with you. We'll minister to you. And our God will bless you. He's sovereign. And he's calling upon you now. Don't live in misery and sin any longer. Come unto him now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Look to hear from you. Be blessed of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we bring this service to a close, we ask that you bow your heads with us as we pray with you and for you. Oh, dear God, your children are out there, Lord. 
partying, Lord, not knowing that they're destroying their bodies and defiling that which is your temple. The Lord, temple, Lord, touch them. Rebuke the power of the enemy. Give them strength and grace to turn their face towards heaven. Reach out to you, Lord God, in prayer, forgiving them of their sins as they ask. Bless and make them a blessing. Bless us all. Bless us all, Lord, at this moment. Turn us around. Hey, my turn us around, Lord. In our destructive ways, on the way to hell and not knowing it, turn us around. We commend, O oh God, all of your children into your hands. Bless them. Make them a blessing. Bless each of us and help us in the face of all that's going on. Keep on trusting in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now may the grace, the mercy, and the peace of God, our Father, even the Lord Jesus Christ, may you keep your hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh.